Hey, I'm Vinny and this is Makeify. So Ikea sells a $10 gooseneck lamp that's actually quite nice. It's got a nice heavy base, a long neck that actually stays in place, and the light is quite bright. So what I wanted to do was replace this heavy base with a magnet so that I could stick it on my tools and use it as a work light. So I did just that. I came up with this solution. And I'm gonna show you how I did it. So the lamp I'm using is this Jan Sojo, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, gooseneck lamp from Ikea, 10 bucks. It's a great deal, it's a nice little lamp. Uh, and I'm also using a round base magnet. Uh, it's got a hole in the middle, uh, rated to 25 pounds. I bought this at Home Depot. It was like, I don't know, three or four bucks. Um, but it's already got a hole on it, so that'll be nice. I'm also gonna need a bolt. Uh, this is an, actually a metric bolt. It's an M4, it's 12 millimeters long and a, a nut. And I actually got both of these at Home Depot. They were very inexpensive. So let's open this lamp up. And it comes not really assembled, somewhat assembled. Um, it comes with this nice heavy base, which we won't be using. AC adapter thing. And here's the gooseneck lamp. Uh, so what I need to do is take some measurements. So the bottom of this guy has uh, two screws and I just need to measure these guys with my calipers. And I'm also gonna take some measurements on the little M4 bolt. So with those measurements, now I can go and design an adapter that will attach to this and then also allow me to put a bolt that will attach to this and hold them both together. Okay, you might wanna make this part of the video full screen so you can see things a little better, uh, but I do all my 3D designing for 3D printing in Fusion 360. It if you're just gonna use it for personal use, you can get a free personal license. Uh, it's a really powerful piece of software. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but there's lots of videos online. Um, I just kinda know the basics, uh, so this is gonna be really basic stuff. So we're gonna start off by creating a cylinder. It's gonna be on the, kind of just on the bottom face here. And we're gonna go 35 millimeters in diameter and 11 millimeter, 11 millimeters thick. And that's our, our main body. Uh, now we need to make holes to fit the uh, lamp in. So I this is how I do it. And I'm sure there's a better way to do this. I'm sure there's a better way to do all of these steps, but um, this is just the way that uh, I've figured out how to, how to, how to do it. Uh, it works for me. I'm just gonna make another cylinder here right in the middle. And this guy needs to be uh, 10 point, well, so the washers are on the lamp are 10 millimeters in diameter, so I'm gonna make them a little bigger here, these holes a little bigger, 10.2. Okay, and it's going to be, these holes are going to be 3.25 millimeters deep. Um, and I'm going to, I don't want these two, these two cylinders to be joined, I want them to be separate. So I'm gonna do a new body. And now we have a separate body, and I can select this body by just drawing a box around it or I can come over here and select it like that. So I need to move this. So I'm gonna right click, move copy, and this needs to be offset um, eight millimeters from the center. So hit enter. I'm gonna select this body again. I'm going to copy it, control C, and then paste it, control V. And that pastes a new copy of that. And then I'm gonna move this over 16 millimeters because these, these holes need to be 16 millimeters apart, center to center. Okay, I'm gonna select both of these guys and I'm gonna drop them down. So right click, move copy and drop them down negative 3.25 so that now the, uh, the tops are flush with the top of this main body. Now I'm gonna turn these cylinders into holes and to do that, I'm going to go combine, select the main body and then select 
the, the two um, smaller cylinders and making sure that this operation is set for cut and then it'll automatically just kind of make turn those into holes so very nice now I need so that's where the the washers and the screw the little screw heads go but I need a place for the threaded part so I'm gonna make another cylinder right here this guy needs to be six millimeters And then here, what I can do is I can just pull this right through. And since I'm pulling it through another body, it automatically switches the cut and it'll make, it'll make a hole all the way through just what I wanted. Um, I'm just going to repeat that over here on this side. And oops, just going to pull this right through. Boom. All right. Now we can attach the lamp to this adapter. Now we need a spot for a bolt to attach to the magnet and I'm going to flip this guy over onto the bottom here and the bolt head is a hexagon so I am going to make a polygon a circumscribed polygon right on this bottom face and I know the diameter of the bolt head is seven millimeters from one flat side to the other so the radius is 3.5 and it's a, it's a hexagon, so six, that's what this was already set at. Okay. And then that's all I need so I can stop, stop that sketch. Let's rotate it. I'm going to select that little hexagon. I'm going to right click. I'm going to press pull it. I'm going to, again, I'm going to pull this right down in this body so it automatically makes a hole. And this guy needs to be five millimeters deep. Boom. So there we go. So now we have a hole for the bolt head. Now we need a, a spot for the threaded part of the bolt. So same way as I'd done before, I'm going to make another cylinder. This guy needs to be about 4.4 millimeters in diameter. And then again, just going to pull this right through and we got a hole. Okay. Actually, I'm going to, I want to print this. I want to print this the other way. Um, so I need to rotate it. So I'm going to select this body, right click, copy, move. I'm just going to rotate this guy 180. Okay. So now that's going to be kind of the top where the lamp attaches. And I'm just going to make this, I'm going to just make it a little fancier. I'm going to select this edge here, right click and select fillet. And we're just going to make a little fillet. I don't know. Let's try three millimeters. Okay, and I know the, the bottom part of the, the lamp is 26 millimeters in diameter, so I'm just going to measure this to see how big it is, this, this top face, and it's 29. So, okay, so I can make this fillet a little bigger. Um, you could undo it and redo it, you know, if it's the last thing you did, like in, in this case it is, I could do it that way, but there's a better way. Notice you have this little timeline down here, and I can select the fillet, right click and edit this feature. And I can just go back and edit this, make this, let's say, let's try four millimeters. Again, we're going to inspect it. 27. Okay, that's good. So this is a really powerful uh, feature of, three, of Fusion 360. So I can go back and I can change any of these like things I've did in the past. I can right click so if I need to make like these holes a little bigger, I can edit the feature and I can, you know, change the diameter of that hole um, without screwing up other things or without having to like undo a whole bunch of times and then redo all my work. So that's really cool. So, okay. So that is my 3D model. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this um, to my software to have it 3D printed. So. Okay, so I just want to show you um, my print settings in case anyone cares. Uh, my 3D printer is an MP Select Mini version 1, uh, and I'm printing this in PETG, P E T G, I call it PETG. Um, and I'm doing a layer height of 0.2 millimeters, uh, three walls, and five top and bottom layers, and then infill density of 20%. Um, if you're printing in PLA, PLA is not quite as strong as PETG. Uh, you might want to bump up 
uh, maybe the wall count or the infill density percentage. But uh, so I'm gonna just send this over to my 3D printer and print it out. So here's my 3D printed part. Turned out pretty well. So I'm going to first take my little M4 12 millimeter nut, or excuse me, bolt, push it through there. Tight fit, but that's good. Okay. Now I'm gonna unscrew these guys. These little screws and washers. I'm gonna put the washers and these big holes here. Mm. They barely fit. Now, these little posts should fit right in here. All right, that's good. And then, screw the bottom, screw the bottom of the lamp onto the adapter. Screwdriver is not the right screwdriver for this job. Much better. Nice and tight. Take our magnet, put it on there. Little nut, thread it on. Could probably use a washer here, but I don't think I'm gonna need it. Tighten this guy. Okay, let's get this plastic protector off. And get the AC adapter on. Plug this guy in. Okay, let's see if it sticks. Oh yeah. Oh, very nice. Okay, let's let's try it on a tool. Drill press. You can stick it on the top. Oh, let's turn it on. Ooh. Good light. Stick it on the side. Oh yeah. <laughs> So I know the format of this video was a little different from my other project videos, but it was a quick little project and I was just trying something new. If you have a 3D printer, I will make the file available for this adapter on Thingiverse so you can download it for free, link down in the description. I'll also put links to um, this lamp and the other few supplies I used down in the video description as well. If you don't have a 3D printer, you could probably make something like that out of wood. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to keep up to date with my news videos. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters, especially Michael Thomas. Thanks for watching. Hey, you. Hey, I'm Vinny and this is, hey, I'm Vinny and this is Makeify. So Ikea, wow, slow down there, buddy. So Ikea sells a gooseneck lamp that's actually quite nice and it's only $10. Oh, Come on now, boy. Uh, it's quite nice because it has a nice long neck. It's bright. But um, while it's, no, shrouds.